Another thing that I did in the preface of the Truthful Art was to ask the software to divide the original chart, or okay, this chart that you see over here in the Truthful Art is very similar to what I got on Insight. Here we have the 400 or 300, I don't remember how many there are, but many, many schools, all the schools in Miami-Dade County, all of them together. But if you remember the original data set, uh, there was another variable here that was the, um, the board district. Miami-Dade Miami, the Miami, Miami -Dade County is divided into nine board districts. I'm opening up the original data set over here. Let me just zoom in. A zoom and 200% so you can see it more clearly, board district, right? So there are nine board districts in Miami-Dade, One, and they are, they are called one, two, three, four. This is going to be problematic in a minute. I will explain why. But in any case, each school district is identified with a number. That's the name of the board district. So it, when I was looking at the data, I said, well, but, but I'm seeing all the schools together. But let's see what the relationship is or how the data looks like if we subset the data, if we subdivide the data by board districts, okay? Right now, we are still working on the add to plot feature. So I'm going to go back to the original data set by moving my cursor down and clicking on close to be able to see the original data set. So with the board district is over, is over here. Now, very important to remember, software tools like uh, Insight and many others, uh, when they see a number, they will identify these as a quantitative variable, right? So if they see one, two, three, four, five, they will assume that five is more than one because they see a number and they believe that this is a number. But this is not actually a number, right? This is a name, right? Name, because this is board district nine, board district two, board district five, or etc. So each school belongs to a board district, right? So Air Base Elementary belongs to board district nine. But that doesn't mean that this is a number. This is the name of the board district, right? This is called a categorical variable. It's not a quantitative variable, right? Nine is not more than four or nine is not more than eight, okay? Now, the problem is that automatically, because inside is seeing a number, it's identifying this number here as a number. We need to actively tell the software that this is not a number, that this is the name of the board district. So we need to change this variable from a quantitative variable to a categorical variable, meaning from a number to a name. Fortunately, this is actually quite easy. If you go to the variables menu up here, you will see that there is a, a menu item that says convert to categorical, okay? And actually the, there's another couple of menus over here that will list all the variables. Now, if you click on convert to categorical, uh, you will get this menu item, this pop-up window that says convert to categorical. Drop variable here, meaning which is the variable that you want to transform from a quantitative variable to a categorical variable. It's board district, right? So I'm going to grab board district and drag it and drop it over here. Drop variable here and now well for, we could also uh, we, we should give this new th th this new variable a name okay so I'm going, first of all i'm going, before doing that i'm going to type name for the new variable because this what this will do is to create a new column over here uh, with that name so the new variable that we're going to create i'm going to call it board district cat or board district categorical so board district categorical all right, so just give it a name or just call it cat or something, something that you can easily, easily remember. Board district categorical, there's a typo there, but I would, I would not even bother changing that. So when we drop the variable over here and then we click on update data, what will happen is that inside will automatically create a new column in the data set with that new variable that we have created. So I'm going to drag and drop. And for some reason, again, this is going to running a little bit slowly. Uh, but if I do that, oh, uh, there you go. So I'm going to try. This happened before. It was not letting me uh, drag and drop the variable for some reason. Uh, if this doesn't work, I will look for an alternative way of doing that. There you go. So it works. So I dr just drag and drop over here and automatically will tell me I am going to get board district and I'm going to transform it into a categorical variable. And if I click on update data, here's what will happen, right? I'm going to, I updated the data, I'm going to clock, uh, close that up, and then if I scroll to the right, uh, a new, oh, actually it's over here. You will see that a new variable has shown up, board district cat, 
right? This is the board district categorical variable. This is the variable that we're going to use, the categorical variable, because inside already knows that this is a name, it's not a number. So what I'm going to do, all right, remember that we have the uh, scatter plot over here that we created before, this is called a scatter plot, uh, with reading on the y-axis and math on the x-axis. I'm going to tell the software to subdivide the data by board district categorical. So I'm going to go over here, select drag and drop, subset variable one, okay? So what, what variable do you want to use to subdivide the data by? So I'm going to go over here, open this uh, drop-down menu and select board district categorical. So if I click on that, uh, inside it will automatically create nine scatter plots. Well, and actually 10 scatter plots because there is one school or more schools that are not assigned to any board district. That is the reason you have a zero. There is not a zero board district, right? But then you have here, the scatter plot for board district number one, the scatter plot for board district number two, the scatter plot for board district number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, which is similar to what you can read in the truthful art. If you download this file or you have the book on your hands, if I zoom in, this is exactly the graphics that I have here, right? One, two, three. It's only that they are in a different order. They begin one, two, three, etc. Now, seeing the data like these will enable you to see some interesting things in the data. Can you notice differences between the different board districts in Miami-Dade? I can see them, right? For instance, take a look at board district number one, okay? This is scatter plot over here is, basically this is scatter plot up here. So let me zoom in to see it clearly. There you go. So well, it's actually a little bit fuzzy. It looks a little bit pixelated, but this, this is scatter plot that you have over here. It's exactly the same. It's only that it's a, a, it was styled a, differently. Now, what, you, what can you notice in this part of the data? Well, probably you notice that there is a single school up here, and then most schools are down here. And take a look at the scale. This is a math, and the, up, the Y scale is, is reading. This means that basically in this board district, for some reason, we don't know why, for some reason, in most schools, not a large percent of students can do math well, and not a, 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 a large percent of students could, who could read well, with one exception. This is a, a school in which a majority of students can do math and read well uh, versus uh, the rest of schools in that board district that are far behind that board district, right? So mo in most schools in this board district, uh, uh, students don't perform uh, really well in math or reading. Something similar happens on board district number two, okay? although it is not as clear as picture as board district number one. And then you have board district number three. Take a look at this. In board district number three, no schools are on the bottom left. Most schools are on the upper right corner, meaning a majority of students can do math well and a majority of students who can read well, meaning a large percentage of students on the schools that belong to this board district perform quite well. Both in math and both in math and in reading, and then you have board districts like number six, in which schools are very spread out. You have schools over here in which students don't perform well in math or in reading, and then schools in which a large percent of students perform rather well in math and in reading. So the schools are very spread out. Then you have board district number seven, in which most most schools are clustered on the upper right corner, meaning that student upper large percent of the students perform well in math and perform well in reading, with one exception. You have a, a school down here in which a small percent of the students can read well or can do math well. This is the kind of uh, insights that you can only get if you visualize your data, right? Which is something that I explain in the preface of the, uh, of the truthful art. I would encourage you to read the preface in order to get more information about the possible insights that we could get uh, from the data set. Actually, what I did afterwards, after exploring the data like this, was to compare these scatter plots to a map of Miami data, and I saw basically that uh, the board districts in which students don't perform that well, board district number one and number two, are also board districts in which uh, average income is low. And then board district number three is Miami Beach, okay, which have, it has um, a, a large you know, number of people who uh, are quite wealthy, right? That doesn't mean that uh, being poor leads to bad school performance. The picture could be a little bit more complicated than that, which is something that I explain 
uh, in the preface of the book that establishing causality, when you also see a correlation, can be much harder than it seems. But at least creating all these graphics has enabled us to see uh, interesting potential stories in the data, to ask ourselves more questions about the data at hand.